great. How to bake the perfect wedding cake in just five easy steps by Paula Dean. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Mix three cups flour with round bones of Negroes. Two, add one cup sugar, out of sugar. Two, visit neighbor, ask Jim Crow to borrow cup of sugar. Three, crack four eggs like Emmett Till's skull over bowl as wide as Tallahassee River. Four, add one teaspoon white privilege for vanilla flavoring. Five, add two sticks butter, one cup milk, mix batter until it is as fair and mulatto as master slave children. Heat batter over burning cross, bake at 350 degrees for exactly 465 years. Cut into equal pieces, one for you, one for Nathan Deal, for Rick Perry, Michelle Bachman, Jan Brewer, Santorum, Cantor, Huckabee, Miss Dean. What does prejudice taste like? Oh. Is it a sweet, a Southern Baptist bigotry? Wow. Is it smooth, like molasses? What is your secret? Is your generosity to the people or is vanilla as a flavoring you mix your cakes in? What about the rest of us? We are all starving for your answer. Offer a piece to Border Patrol, to the Westboro Baptist Church. Gut another slice of cake until the sugar rots your teeth. Let it sink into your stomach like the anchors of the slave ships my ancestors arrived on. We will all help you with this plantation-style wedding. You can use the robes of clan members to dress your tables. Oh. Hire darkies like us to be the help. Send the blackest ones to sweat in your kitchens. Dress the rest of us in suits as house negroes. You can use Dr. King's tombstone as a cutting board. The walls of slave ships as firewood. You will look the other way every time you use that word. The one that's burning on the tip of everyone's tongue. The one that all of America refuses to say. We will watch as you mix the word nigger into your cake batter and serve it back to us in the form of southern style cooking. Miss Dean. You are not as good a cook as you think. Some of the best meals are served without prejudice. There is nothing more disgusting than racism disguised as food. Your cooking reminds me too much of Malcolm X assassination, of the bombings in Birmingham, of Plessy versus Ferguson. Perhaps, perhaps you should try a new recipe, one that doesn't involve using the ground up remains of my family, Miss Dean. You will feed many more mouths if you take the hate out of your kitchen. It is a bitter pill that I refuse to swallow. It is a clenched fist and barbed wire that burns like acid on the way down. If you add just a little culture to your cookbook, season your views, add just a pinch of tolerance, you can make the most exquisite dish. One that is sweet enough for everybody and not just yourself.